Hi folks, Roach here. Uh, I'm going to wing it on this video and I apologize again for the production uh, value. Um, the headphones, um, the odd lighting, but you can take comfort in the in the fact that uh, you know this isn't white privilege because you know obviously uh, I'm not white. I'm definitely yellow. Okay, so, so just relax. There's nothing weird going on here. This video is about uh, protection of the right to due process and why that why that is important. Um, at, at which point, right now, okay, most of you people's eyes are glazing over, uh, and you know that's about it. Um, most of you folks are not going to see this video. Um, in fact, I believe that if it shows up on your recommended list, video list, you're probably under surveillance. Uh, that is, unless this video actually breaks out and uh, they lose control. Uh, but, you know, if it's just a 1Z, 2Z, and you're able to watch this video, I'm sure they're watching you. Okay, they've been watching me since 1999. All right, due process of law. And why is the protection of that right important? Okay, Merriam-Webster, and I get this from the uh, website. M most of the definitions I'm going to use here, I'm going to get from Merriam-Webster, except for one from Cornell Law website. Okay, so and I'll tell you what they are. Now I'm not going to put these links in in the description uh, because I'm lazy. Okay, and it's okay for me to be lazy because <laughs> you're too lazy to go and hunt this down yourself. So hey, we're all we're all the same here. So and it's totally cool. I give you permission to be totally lazy just you know I just expect the same treatment okay so due process right or due process of law what what what, what is what am I talking about here and, and why is that important and due process says fair treatment through normal judicial system through the through the normal judicial system okay let's let's try that again fair treatment through the normal judicial system especially as citizens entitlement okay fair treatment through the normal judicial system okay I don't know about you but for me fair treatment and normal judicial system means that you don't you, you treat me through uh, an action of a jury and an impartial judge that's fair treatment so I can see the laws that you're trying or the charges that you're uh, that you're you've alleged against me <coughs> I can I can present uh, a defense of my actions any you know mitigating circumstances to the jury uh, I can also uh, employ the jury to look at the law as it is written hold up the Constitution and see if that law actually is in alignment with the Constitution and if it's not the jury actually has the power to say tell the government hey wait a minute we don't like this it goes away right now and then you know of course uh, either I'm free or they they present a uh, they, they present a case uh, and, and they show the law and the jury uh, jury is convinced yep yeah the law is valid we want that law to to stand and you did something that the 12 of us just don't like and your the punishment is just and then of course I would say okay well you know hey <laughs> all right I was wrong okay hit me okay and, and, and that's that's due process and that's fair treatment okay now the corn from the Cornell website it says the Fifth Amendment says the federal government uh, 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 the, the Fifth Amendment says to the federal government that no one shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Okay? Oh, we don't have due process of law. Okay? Uh, what's going on in Washington right now is everybody's trying to get indictments. Okay? right and all the people are all excited about wow hey we can finally get these people indicted okay yeah sounds great man oh cuz you know maybe you don't know what indictment actually means 
Okay, so so the process is that you have a grand jury, which are 12 people, and in, in, in the case of, like, say, the special prosecutor, uh, he has a number of grand juries that he can present evidence to. So he's talking to these people. Do, do we know these people? No, no. Uh, they're, they're probably secret until the case is over. Uh, and, and then, you know, who knows? Uh, I mean, Judicial Watch is probably going to have to, uh, you know, wait for two, three years just to find out, you know, who they actually were to see if there was any conflict of interest. Okay. Uh, so, an indictment, okay, an indictment from Miriam Webster is a formal written statement framed by a prosecuting authority and found by a jury. Okay, a formal written statement framed by a prosecuting authority found by a jury. Okay, that's the charge. Okay, so 12 people say, mm, you know what? We believe that this man needs to be charged. All right. At which point that man or woman, whoever they are, then enjoys a jury trial where 12 people decide, look at the law like that. But generally in these cases, especially if you hold office, it doesn't even get to that. Okay. One, as soon as the word indictment comes out, public opinion says, oh my God, he's got to be bad. Let's turn on him and get rid of him. And, you know, people, uh, a lot of public officials will just resign just simply because they were charged with something. Uh, what, and it really, you know, at that point, it really doesn't matter if they actually did that or not, or whether or not, uh, uh, you know, whether or not uh, they, they could be vindicated in a court. Uh, because the mere fact is that it's going to take up a whole lot of money and a lot of conscientious uh, politicians don't even want to burden the public with that kind of nonsense. Okay. But, you know, we, I mean, we hear the word indictment and we're all howling for their heads, you know, and, and they know that. And at which point then they realize that, you know, nothing that the politician can say after that really is going to matter because you know half the people are going to say hey off with his head the other half are just going to just shake their head and and in, in disgust and just say yeah well it's over okay yeah and that's where we're at right now i mean and it's because you know people don't know what due process of law is they don't know what indictment means they they, they don't know uh uh you know what uh uh you know what the fifth amendment says you know, they don't even know why it's important. They don't even know why due process of law is important. You know, and this is, this is the first time you ever really thought about this stuff. Then, <laughs> then, then really you have no reason whatsoever to be uh, excited about the developments of the Nunez memo coming out. Um, you have no reason at all to be excited about that. Okay. There's nothing good happening here, folks. I, I hate to rain on your parade. I know some of you are excited. I know, I know some of you are dancing. You know, doing the "I was right" dance and stuff like that, and and ha 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 ha. And but you know, really, all I see is just complete paralysis. I mean, they're not doing anything. There's a lot of words, okay, oh, and they're good words. I, I really like those words. They, you know, they, they they make you feel really good. Um, but if I could really point to one action. One actual action that, that you know, then, you know, okay, okay. It, one might say, oh, well, the release of the newness menu. Oh, okay, yes. They actually came out and said some words. That's great. <laughs> um, oh, that's it. I've heard the words. I'm totally down with that, man. That, 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 you know, hey, shoot. Everything's going to be great because I heard those words. You know, I've heard some other words, too. Um, you're not going to like those words, but <laughs> I'm going to say them, uh, and you're not going to probably like me saying them, but, you know, hey, I, I can't help that, you know, <laughs> you know, quite frankly, if you don't know what due process of law is, uh, do I need to really be worried about what you think? <laughs> you know, I, it's never a good idea to insult your audience, you know, I, I had sent, but, you know, I'm going to take the risk here, you know, I'm, I'm just going to step on out there, you know, uh, you know I'm not a coward courageous it's okay I, I I don't mind dealing with the potential threat of undermining my own credibility especially when I'm speaking to people 
that really have no standing. <laughs> all right, enough with the insults, guys. You know, sorry. You know, you're all good. Okay, it's all good. It's all good here. All right, so uh, basically, what we're looking at are um, evil Russians who are subverting our uh, our our political process. Right? You know, if, if we vote for somebody, we better. We better darn sure, we better make darn sure that nothing interferes with that, you know. And if them evil Russians out there, you know, under, under that evil man Putin, are, uh, are are swaying, attempting to sway public opinion, uh, or or actively trying to, you know, subvert, you know, our right to vote, our right to be heard, uh, then uh, then yeah, that, that that's a terrible thing. Um, I, I go back to Samuel Clements, who, who, who called himself Mark Twain as, as the writer, and he said something one time that was that I thought was pretty interesting. And you know, I might butcher this. Okay, he said, uh, <clears throat> "If voting really mattered, they wouldn't let us do it." <laughs> All right, <laughs> you might not like that, but. <laughs> He said that a long time ago, folks. Okay, this this guy, his eyes were open. He knew he knew what was going on. He knew. Okay, so he's trying to help us, but you know, of course, we <laughs> haven't been listening. All right. So here here's the thing. They said that oh, tr r you know, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump may have been colluding with the Russians. Hmm. Wow, sounds bad. How many of you actually know what colluding means? Hmm? Yeah, it sounds bad, really. Yeah, because it's you know, use some fancy word, and half the population don't even know what the heck they're talking about. And but of course, they don't want to say that because you know everybody else around them might think they're dumb. <laughs> All right, but hey, just relax. All right, I'll take care of it. Okay, this is what colluding means from Merriam-Webster. It means to come to a secret understanding for a harmful purpose conspire <gasps> oh my god conspire <gasps> oh there's another word that I don't know the actual meaning of but it really sounds bad doesn't it oh conspire <gasps> conspiracy <gasps> oh my gosh you know I know one thing when anybody says conspiracy or conspiracy theory I automatically shut off my brain and I stop listening to everything they say because they have no credibility and not only that but I erase everything I heard from them from the point that they start started speaking okay so because I use the word conspiracy theory right now you're gonna erase and you're gonna mark as suspect everything that I said up until this point it's automatic. You've been conditioned to do that. It's okay. Now, those of you who are smart enough to see that for the first time in your life, good for you. Good for you. You're doing good here. All right. So, let's go back. All right. So, colluding means come to a secret understanding for harmful purpose and conspire. Hmm. Now, two things there. Secret, harmful purpose, and conspire. Oh, conspire. Conspire from Merriam-Webster says make secret, there's that word again, secret plans jointly to commit an unlawful or harmful act. Okay? So, okay, so you're colluding. So you're meeting with somebody and you're doing something secret. And and it's secret and, and you're going to injure or, or, or harm somebody or something. Mm, that's terrible. You know, quite frankly, folks, um, prostitutes pissing on a hotel bed really doesn't cause a whole lot of harm. Oh, sorry. Hang on just a second here. I, sorry, folks. Uh, Beebles came home and you know, I just didn't want, uh, you know, weird interruption. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Okay. I... I don't know. I, I, I believe that I'm on f pretty firm ground that Russian prostitutes pissing on a hotel bed is really n n not a big deal. 
okay? Uh, but I, I, I'm, I don't really see how um, that actually is a uh, imminent threat to our national security. I could be wrong, okay? Uh, I imagine if all the Russian prostitutes were pissing on hotel beds that it could create so much laundry that they go out of business. I don't know, uh, you know, and then maybe the hotel staff can't change, change the bed or clean the beds sufficiently and, and still turn a profit. So then the, they, they would go out of business. Um, that is if it actually happened, because uh, I, I mean, I have some doubts that any of that actually really happened. You know, I, you know, I, what do I know? I, I only know what they tell me. Um, and, and they're telling me this stuff. Um, now, I don't think that that's really that big a deal. That really just bothered me a bit. I, I don't know. And, and if you guys are bothered by that, um, okay. I'll, 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 I understand. What really bothers me about that is, is not... And let's assume all of this is true. Let's let's say Donald Trump had Russian prostitutes pissing on the bed. Okay, let's accept that as absolutely true. I think there's something seriously wrong with you if you believe that the fact that that actually happened was sufficient to completely violate a man's right to privacy by wiretapping him and surveilling him and everyone around him. Now, what nobody is talking about, and there's a lot of outrage about how the FBI and the DOJ uh, created a false document and then f defrauded a federal judge, right? Now think about this, right? You come up to me, right? And you hand me a story about Russian prostitutes pissing on a bed. The last thing I would think of is, oh, wow, we need to watch that guy. I don't think that that's a problem. I, I seriously have to question whether or not this guy who's is pretending to be a federal federal judge uh, on a, on a FISA court, secret FISA court, right? And 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 let me tell you what, secret courts. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, you got a court out there. It's doing things, and and people don't even know what it's doing. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That, that's fair treatment through a, a normal judicial system. You know, if you would have said just the term secret court to Thomas Paine or Patrick Henry or Thomas Jefferson or George Washington and even Ben Franklin, Samuel Adams, any of them folks, John Hancock, any of those people in that building that signed the bottom of the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, they would never they, they would still be laughing in fact it would probably kill them and they'd probably still be laughing in their graves just by saying the word secret court okay <laughs> right but nobody is talking about the impropriety of the judges oh because they're sacrosanct oh okay they they're, they're they're untouchable. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. They are, they are gods. And for you to question the integrity of a, 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 of a judge, oh my gosh, you must be a criminal. Just, just by saying that a federal judge is just a worthless criminal. If you say that, oh my gosh, you are some kind of coup. But really, honestly, okay? <laughs> I ask you, okay, a bunch of prostitutes pissing on a bed, and, and are, are you going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, man, totally step all over his rights, man. That's totally okay with me. Yeah, 
that's the kind of world I want to live in because, you know, heaven forbid, I uh, cut the tags off of my mattress. Oh, man, I, I should be surveilled continually. Okay? All right. So, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at notes over here. Uh, so, you know, forgive me if I, you know, I'm not looking in the camera right now. Okay. So the next thing on my list, okay, is um, <clears throat> that you have to understand that I've been under very high level surveillance since 1999. Okay. And, and because of what I did. And, and no, I did not, heaven forbid, piss on a hotel bed. Okay. All right. What I did was so much more criminal absolutely just reprehensible and I am ashamed for doing it okay so in 1999 okay I was looking around and I was a little bit uncomfortable okay understand that I still believed in my country I still believed in the government out there protecting me and I actually thought well hey wait a minute you know it, it, it's making some mistakes and there's some incompetent people in in government and, and they're making some mistakes so I really wanted to call attention to it and, and to me it was actually kind of important okay and so I decided I would send a letter uh, expressing my concerns to Senator Wayne Allard of Colorado and what I said in the letter uh, was you know quite frankly I, I mean absolute absolutely terrible behavior on my part okay absolutely terrible okay what I did was okay I, I you know things were coming out in the in, in the media that I noticed and it made me a little uncomfortable so what I said was in the letter I mean, I talked about a number of things, but one of the things that really piqued their interest was I said, okay, we had, at the time, it was Bill Clinton, okay? And as I understood it, Bill Clinton told one of his folks, one of his uh, cabinet-level uh, uh, people within his administration, go to the Los Alamos laboratory and relax the security, Okay? Now, Los Alamos Laboratory held all of the secrets, all of the design secrets, and all of the data, and all of the research for all the nuclear weapons that the United States had developed, tested. I mean, all of those intricate details were held at that facility, right? And, hey, it was probably prudent to guard those secrets, okay? Because, you know, if that, those secrets got out, that could, that could actually present a, a, a big problem. Well, at the time, and I don't know if you remember, you know, our relationship with China wasn't really that good. Um, in fact, um, they were technically, in the minds of most people, as enemies, as, you know, they were a communist country. They were communists. Okay. All right. And the fact that it was our president who told uh, who had the security relaxed at Los Alamos laboratories? That made me a little uncomfortable, knowing what I knew about what was there. Now the re relaxation of that security led a guy named, or allegedly, okay, because uh, apparently he went to jail for this, or, or they did something, you know, he was prosecuted for that. Uh, at least that's what we're supposed to think that he was the one that did it. Apparently, somebody actually downloaded every bit of useful information out of that facility, and it ended up, and it ended up in Russian hands. You know, uh, that was all, all, all that stuff was paid for on your back. You did it. You paid for it. You worked hard, and they took money from you. And then this guy creates a situation where all that, all that gets turned over to the Russians. Okay. I said, hmm, okay, maybe he made a mistake. Maybe he's just incompetent. Hmm, 
all right maybe he's maybe he's just a stooge maybe uh, maybe somebody around him got the better of him all right so then there was this like press conference and, and this was back when the governor uh, the president was actually asking questions from the press uh, and, and they asked him a question of when did he find out that somebody had uh, penetrated the security of the Los Alamos laboratory and stolen all of the secrets uh, he said wow no I he stood up there and said something to the effect of wow you know this is like I heard it when you guys heard it you know it came out in the news and you know that was it that was a lie <laughs> Okay, because right after that, the FBI agents that, that apparently had briefed the president like two weeks before, specifically on the data breach, okay, uh, they came unglued. <laughs> and they basically said, no, 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 no. He knew all about it. Okay, so now he, this man is standing in front of all the American people telling everybody that he just found out about it which was a lie okay and what does that do well he's trying to conceal the fact that he was a little bit more than tangentially involved in that whole thing well later we find out that the you know the the beginning stages of the clinton foundation actually got paid by the chinese okay and you know all we'd have to really do is find the you know follow the money and find out that hey wait a minute hey it's a quid pro quo hey look it up okay <laughs> right so he had a deal he made a deal a secret plan hmm, to jointly commit an unlawful or harmful act and I said all right that's a problem and not only that but you know there was another incident with uh, a company called the Ralph space right who was launching a <clears throat> a, uh, uh, a missile a satellite into orbit uh, you know uh, you know a launch vehicle a rocket okay uh, in China right and that rocket like blew up crashed and killed 300 Chinese people who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time like downrange okay so they launched this rocket it failed it crashed killed 300 people and because of the crash, of course, Chinese officials were all over the crash site and key elements of U.S. ballistic missile technology, including uh, codes used by the U.S. to communicate with their satellites, uh, ended up in the hands of the Chinese. And I'm thinking, wow, how convenient. Oh, it's a bad thing that the rocket crashed. Uh, uh, terrible, terrible. And, and maybe that satellite uh, wasn't even destined for orbit <laughs> in the first place, you know. Uh, so it came out that, you know, the President Bill Clinton was uh, heavily involved in Laurel space. And, you know, at that point, I said, wow, you know, this guy's got absolutely no credibility at all because he stood up and lied about his involvement with the Los Alamos laboratory and I think I said hmm is he my friend is he a friend of the people of the uh, of America and I had to conclude that hmm from what I see I would call that you know treason treason I would I would probably if indeed and I wasn't sure I was just simply making a case I was simply charging him with treason okay and I said well normally uh, you hang people for treason and if he did you know if it is treason and every you know when I look it looks like treason to me and and and, and here here's the element that you have to understand okay if you see me committing an act of treason, okay, if you see me, right, so the president knew about Wen Ho Lee. He knew that he'd relax the security. And, and why? Why on that facility? And, and why his direct involvement in relaxing the security on that facility? Okay, why? 
We never heard the answer. Okay. Nobody asked the question. Okay. So if I if you see me committing an act of treason, what happens? Hmm? What do you have to do? Hmm? What do you have to do? You have to tell somebody. Hey, I'm, I'm seeing an act of treason. But see, let's say the president was innocent here. If the president was innocent, then there would be no reason for him to stand in front of each and every one of us and tell everyone, hey, it's the first I've heard of it. Unless he wanted to cover the fact that he had intentionally reduce the level of security at that facility, giving Wen Ho Lee all the help that he needed to get anything that he want. Okay? And that's what I put in the letter. At which point it went to Allard, okay, and like two months later these two goons, and I'm going to call them goons, they called themselves Secret Service, okay? And, you know, at the time, they had cards, little laminated cards that said that they were, you know, Secret Service agents. They had black suits, okay? They had black sunglasses, and they had a black suburban. Really? So, obviously, they were actually Secret Service. And they told me they were Secret Service. Oh, my gosh. Now, of course, I'd be stupid not to believe them, right? Well, you know, I, I start really thinking about that. You know, I was 1999. Uh, they could have been actors. Who knows? What, what, what do I know? Okay. However, they had to be involved somewhere in government because they had a copy of my letter and they had these little yellow highlights all over it where they took pieces of words and pieces of sentences and they tried to hook those together to make the words say something that actually I didn't say. Okay, so the horrible thing and the horrible, absolutely shameful thing that I did is I charged, right? I alleged that Bill Clinton had committed an act, at least of abuse of office, that rose to a level of treason. And I used the word treason, and then I said, hey, you know what you do is you hang traitors. traitors. That's what happens to you. You hang them. Okay. Uh, why do I say that? Well, you know, the, the two Rosenbergs, you know, or at least the people that they pinned uh, uh, the responsibility of giving the Russians the atomic bomb secrets, you know, back in like like 40s or early 50s, uh, the, these, two, these two folks, as husband and wife, they were blamed for passing, uh, passing uh, 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 information to the Russians about our, our atomic bombs. So now, you know, the Russians had the atomic bomb. Oh, and everybody was howling then, and, uh, you know, they hung them people. Uh, and I, I think there was a lot of deception. I don't really think that the Rosenbergs directly went to the Russians and gave them that. I think that there was an intermediate party in there, and they thought they were giving it to their friends, and their friends said, hey, wow, this is cool. Let's sell it to the Russians. All right, and I, I think that's more accurate, but that intermediate party, oh, we don't talk about that. And if you do talk about it, you're bad. Okay, so that was in 99. Okay, so because I thought I was a citizen and of this country, and I had a responsibility to say, hey, you know, I got a problem with that. Um, there was another thing in the letter, and I'll, I'll come to that here a little bit later, but I, I want to look at <clears throat> what's going on with QAnon. Okay. There are a lot of people out there, right, that are looking at what's being posted by QAnon, and because some of the stuff line up with what's going on and what the media is telling us, it's the God's honest truth. He's got to be an insider. Why? Well, because when he says, he says something before it actually happens. Right? Before what actually happens? Before the media reports on it? 
Okay. Well, here, I don't mean to burst your bubble here, but hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought that QAnon actually just works for the media? And if you're telling me that folks that have come out with movies that have CGI on it, that are almost virtually indistinguishable from reality, when you're looking at spaceships and all this other stuff, aliens and all that stuff, and it's, it, I mean, from a standpoint of production quality, it, it's almost, you know, virtually impossible for, you know, the layman to look at and say, hey, you know, th that's artificial. All right, so you got QAnon, on, right? He's telling, maybe all he's doing is telling you what the media is about to do and what the media is about to report on. Okay, let's, for for instance, let's look at that helicopter crash in Long Beach and and, and the, uh, the president of, you know, some sort of shady pedophilia hotel was killed. Okay. Did you see it? <laughs> I didn't see it. Is there anybody out there actually saw it? I, I'll listen to you if you're a credible witness. I mean, I can look at you, see if you. I can usually tell if you're lying. You know, I'll listen to Bombard. I mean, she she'd be able to tell. But how do I know that the that that heli helicopter even crashed? Okay, there might have been some smoke. Somebody might have seen the helicopter crash. How do we know that this lady l lady died in that helicopter crash? Right? We're gonna t uh, you're gonna trust what? Okay, so a police officer comes up and, and says it. How do you know that he's a police officer? Oh well, oh well, he looks like the police officer. Is he? Who knows? We have no way of actually verifying any of it. So you folks are getting very excited about something that sounds awfully good. Why? Because some very good words are being spoken, and those are words that you like hearing. And you want to hear great words, great words. Uh, I don't know. And you know what? I don't know. But I, one thing I don't know, or what, or one thing I do know is most of you folks don't know either. All right. So, you know, what evidence do I have that these things are actually going on? None. So I don't mean to be paranoid, but uh, I mean, really? The media is not credible. The internet is not credible. Understand that, hey, I don't care. You may not think I'm credible. That's totally fine. In fact, I would rather you be suspicious about what I say. Because I might be a Russian prostitute and I might piss on your bed. Oh, good God. Okay. So let's look. And, 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 and that's QAnon, right? Uh, would you please put the skepticism glasses on? Okay. You guys are running with this. And, and, and quite frankly, guess what? You know what I say? Hmm. Is Hillary Clinton in handcuffs? No? Okay. Then nothing's happening. Okay. So let's talk about the special prosecutor M Mueller okay so he's got he's going to a grand jury and the grand jury is going to decide if people need to be indicted most specifically the president right and what are they gonna do they're gonna decide if they should charge the president with colluding with the Russians Save him some trouble. Let's admit the fact that prostitutes pissed on the bed. Hey, that's fine, Robert. <laughs> Get lost. Okay. All right. Now, here's something that I want you guys to realize. Trey Gowdy is a wonderful guy because he says good words. He talks about the Constitution. He talks about accountability. He talks about impropriety. He talks about ensuring the fairness of the process and, and the procedures. Okay. Uh, those are absolutely great words. Great. Absolutely great. 
I love, totally love those words. But nothing's happening. Nothing. I don't see anything happening. Nothing's actually happening. They already have, if indeed what actually happened, okay, with respect to the Department of Justice, with the respect to the FBI, right, with the uh, respect to the FBI and the Department of Justice and, and uh, the IRS harassing citizens. Now, how do I know that they were doing that? Because they did it to me in 2012, directly. They violated my due process of law. They took something from me, and <laughs> there was no jury involvement. There was no impartial judge. In fact, nobody even has heard any of my charges and evidence. To this day, not a single person in government has responsibly responded to anything. Oh, and they had their chances. Oh, the, the number of FBI agents that I've talked to, revenue officers from the IRS, all right? But then there's this other thing. <gasps> there's this thing, the secret thing, oh, that nobody wants to talk about. Oh, absolutely not. I haven't heard anybody talk about it whatsoever. Nobody has talked about this. What about U.S. Treasury? Nobody talks about U.S. Treasury. U.S. Treasury is actually the nexus. Okay, U.S. Treasury, their enforcement officers, and I've met them. Okay, I've met them. Right in '99, the first thing that the Secret Service agents told me when I were on my front porch, or uh, alleged Secret Service agents. Okay, the guy called himself Wayne Borg. Um, he said he was with Secret Service. Uh, you could check to see if Wayne Borg was actually in the Secret Service at that time. And I'd like to see his picture uh, to see if the guy that was standing on my porch was indeed Wayne Borg. I'd like to know that. Uh, nobody's helping me with that. That one little simple thing to verify that he was actually Secret Service. Because I'd like to ask him a question because the first thing that he said to me was, Mr. Poole, you understand that due process does not apply here. Oh, that's the time where I decided that the Constitution was completely out the window. Then, okay? So, right, so April 10th, 2012, I get a visit from two Treasury agents from the Enforcement Division of U.S. Treasury coming to uh, check to see if I was a violent threat, uh, whether I was insane, and, or whether I was ignorant of the law. First thing they told me was, Mr. Poole, we want you to understand that we will in no way violate, do we intend to or violate your rights. Now, I don't remember that man's name. He was the lead. The other guy, his name was Keith, and he was in Treasury. Okay, should be pretty easy to find who he is. Pretty Should be pretty easy to just subpoena the whole bunch of them uh, or, or go through subpoena the government, get a list of all of the agents that were involved in this particular debacle. Right. So then, right after he told me that, he says, you understand the system doesn't provide due process of law and doesn't provide remedy and recourse to the law. And I said, hmm, okay, then obviously I'm not in that system because, as I understand it, um, the Fifth Amendment says something about whether uh, I am allowed uh, a, a, you know, the fair treatment through the judiciary judicial process before I'll be deprived of life, liberty, or property, uh, you know, without due process. Uh, so telling me that, you know, hey, that's abuse of office. That's uh, official misconduct under what I thought was the law of the land. Slam dunk. Well, that's probably why it took place in, a, in the conference room and there was nobody else in the room. But hey, you don't have to believe that that's what they said. Fact is, their actions actually backed it up. At the end, they told me, he says, you know, the, these, uh, your company is about to commit a crime against you. And I says, I know, I know. And, I, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, yeah, well, you're treasury officers and you're just waiting for them to commit the crime because then you're going to come in and you're going to just whip it on them. Oh, well, they committed the crime. Yeah, they, they took my paycheck. They fired me. It violated Texas law. It violated federal law. It violated my 
fundamental right to due process of law. It violated my right to uh, remedy and recourse to the law. And I, because I basically reserved those rights when I responded to a fraudulent notice of lien from the IRS sent by a guy named Michael C. Allred out of Honolulu, one of Barack Obama's bases of operations. Right, it's Chicago. That's where Rahm Emanuel comes from. I think Eric Holder is there. You know, all all of the Clinton goons come. Uh, all of the Obama goons come from there. And if you want to talk Obama goons, Clinton goons, they're all in the same. Okay, but nobody talks about Treasury. Okay, Treasury has an enforcement division. Treasury failed in this. Nobody talks about it. Why? Because they are the nexus between the federal government and the central banks. And you're not supposed to know that. That's why nobody talks about their failure. And I can prove their failure. Why? Just by what happened. right? Not only that, but apparently they've totally corrupted the Texas government here. Because I had a, I had a state attorney general, Greg Abbott, completely fail me. Co completely fail me. And not only that, but he told me on the phone that he wasn't going to obey the law. right? And he wasn't going to do his job. Now, whether or not you believe me doesn't really matter. The truth is, he didn't obey the law, and he didn't do what was required of him by office. You don't have to believe that we had that conversation. You could just simply look at the evidence, get testimony from the agents involved, and I know enough of their names, and I know what they look like, and if somebody would actually listen to my evidence, I'd tear down the Texas government right now because that Texas Attorney General is now the governor of Texas and the the governor before that is responsible also because I mean I went to everybody I went to the Travis County District Attorney's Office I mean I, I went to the Travis County Sheriff's Department while they were escorting employees back and forth after what they did to me they said oh well he he, he could be violent so they were escorting employees back and forth uh, from the office to the car because, you know, I might come over there and shoot them. You know, all the while the employees are laughing their heads off thinking, Roger, <laughs> maybe you don't know him. <laughs> all right. So no due process of law, a complete violation of my rights. And they deprived me of property, uh, liberty and life uh, without due process of law. And I, I took the trouble fulfilled my duty to notify them that I was reserving those rights. Okay, and they, they stepped all over that. Okay, so the special prosecutor M Mueller was involved in the Uranium One deal. Okay, Rod Rosenstein was involved with the shenanigans going on in the fraudulent procurement of surveillance, uh, 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 surveillance warrants against Donald Trump. And that created a conflict of interest. Okay, now, if you don't know what that is, I invite you to go and look that up so you know what that is, right? Uh, but the short version is this. I cannot investigate a crime where I'm involved in that crime. That's like going to the criminal and saying, yeah, you're going to have to put yourself in jail. Okay. Now, before, th this is not an issue about President Trump firing Rod Rosenstein and firing the Mueller, uh, everybody on the Mueller team. This is about Rod Rosenstein and Mueller's failure to conscientiously remove themselves from the investigation. Oh, just like Sessions did. They should have stood up and said, we are not qualified to do this. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't violate their Fifth Amendment right. If they didn't want to say why they couldn't do that, then that's fine. It would have come out anyway. You no, know, by rights, nobody would want to touch this. So my question is, anybody who'd who'd actually proceed from that point wouldn't want anything to do with it, especially if they knew what what was going on. They wouldn't want to touch this thing. So there wouldn't be anybody who'd want to be a special prosecutor in the first place, given what we know. So now these guys are saying, oh, there's going to be a red line. Oh, well, so where's Trey Gowdy? 
Well, I'll tell you where Trey Gaddy is. He's telling us, oh, no, no, we need to allow that process to proceed. He's got a lot of respect for Robert Mueller, right? Uh, and, you know, R Rob Rosenstein. And he really trusts the process. And those are really good words. And I know damn well he knows that Rob Rosenstein and Robert Mueller are operating under a criminal criminal conflict of interest which is uh, an immense m immense abuse of office it's official misconduct and and not only that but it actually aids acts of sedition committed by not only the FBI not only the IRS not only US Treasury okay not only uh, Department of Justice not only the Clinton's uh, Clinton administration the DNC okay and the Obama administration directly, and we know that too. Okay, he he's all over this. Okay, not only that, right? But by Rosenstein themselves, he knows that. He knows that. But what's he saying to the American people? Oh, we need to trust the process. We need to trust. We need to leave those criminals abusing their offices engaging in acts of misconduct we, we we need to let them do that because you know we have a we have laws here in this country and 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 those laws need to be followed hmm. the reason you have a special prosecutor is because the department of justice still isn't doing their job okay but nobody wants to talk about hey where's the where's the supreme court here huh well, I'll tell you where they're at. They're getting bumped off here in Texas under the eyes of the Texas government, right? Oh, yeah, natural causes. You know, everybody sleeps with a pillow on their face. That's just natural. I can't believe they actually said that. That's them making clown, making fun and clowning on you. Right? They're doing it right in front of your face and shoot. Right? right under the nose of Texas governor who didn't even launch an independent independent investigation why <laughs> he's dirty I've known he's dirty since since 2012 directly right go hunt down a guy named Joe Robinson Joe Robinson I, I think he was an attorney working for the Texas Attorney uh, General's office at the time right how do I know he's dirty well we had several I had several meetings quote unquote interrogations by uh, Treasury officials one named Tryon you can look that up uh, FBI agents named Jerry Joseph and and then my wife met with uh, 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 somebody called Jacob all right and then there was this Angela lady and and Tryon she was from Treasury and they they were right there and then these were Clinton goons Okay, these were Clinton gloons, and that started in 99 because, boy, they did not like me questioning, oh, the credibility of Bill Clinton, which is a joke, folks, which is an abs absolute joke, okay, absolute joke, Bill Clinton, oh, honest Bill Clinton, right up there with honest Abe, <laughs> or, you know, George Washington, oh, you cannot challenge his credibility it's flawless because he did not have sex with that woman Monica Lewinsky did not he I don't know what it was that he did but it was not having sex okay right but hey it wasn't Russian prostitutes pissing on his bed, folks. Remember that. Okay? It's okay. He didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't Russian prostitutes pissing on his bed. Oh, it wasn't his bed, but it was a hotel bed. Okay. All right? So, all right. So you got Rosenstein, Mueller, out. Uh, if you actually wanted to do this right, and, and there is no reason for me to believe that anything's going to come from this, right? Because I'm not going to pick on the Democrats, okay? Hey, you're doing what you're doing. I know wh why you're doing it. I know you're afraid, okay? And I know you're taking one for the team, 
Okay, how do I know that? Because the Republicans and the Democrats are more than happy for one of you guys to take one for the team and take the hit. Okay, as long as a majority of the American people don't realize that both of you are involved in raping, torturing, and murdering the children of this country and of the world. As long as the a majority of American people don't find out about that, they shoot the Democrats, they're happy to be the complete laughing stock of the world. then both of you can all breathe a sigh of relief, say, huh, we're able to sufficiently distract the American people from actually figuring that out. Hmm. Right? Child Protective Services. Do you know what that actually means? Especially in Florida, apparently. Uh, it means that they protect the children to ensure that they arrive at the pedophile official's house totally unblemished, undamaged, and unhurt so that they're flawless, so they can torture, rape, and murder them. Child Protective Services. Yeah, they, they tell you what they do, but it isn't what, of course, you and I think they do. Okay, now, I want to get to the point where, okay, there are people that are outraged. I mean, they are outraged. They're absolutely outraged. And I would suggest, hey, don't don't burn your cities down. Don't go around shooting one another. Don't go shooting government officials. Don't be hurting anybody. And here's here's the reason why. Okay? Because you have absolutely no reason to complain. Okay? Absolutely no reason whatsoever. Okay? Why? Well, uh, there was a guy... Uh, the CIA has been overthrowing duly elected governments and doing this thing called regime change. I, I mean, what? It was like more than 30 countries. The CIA was directly involved with not even tampering with their elections, but just out and out removing duly elected officials. You know, like Ukraine. Hey, you know, the people elected that guy. I mean, okay. He wasn't, he wasn't I, what a normal person would call a good guy. But, you know, hey, those folks wanted him in there, and it's their right to do that. You going in there and, 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 and sending insurgents in there to overthrow the government because, oh, you don't like the guy. <laughs> That's not your deal, dude. All right? So the, the CIA and the government have been overthrowing duly elected governments all over the world and now they're overthrowing your government well you know if you didn't get outraged by what they were doing before you have no right to get outraged of what's being done to you right now isn't that yeah isn't that fair that's fair you do it to others and they do it to you well it's being done to you right now and you're gonna let it happen because you let it happen okay so it's gonna happen so just resign yourself to the fact that guess what <laughs> you do not have the right to self-determination. Hmm? That's gone. Why? Because you took that right from other people. So let's look at due process of law and let's look at what it is, what it means. Okay? That means, let's say it's me and I'm, I'm the evil one. I'm going to take your stuff from you. I'm going to take your property from you. I'm going to take your freedom away from you. I'm going to take your wife and kids. And I'm going to do it just because I don't like you. So I'm going to call my goons. We're going to show up at your house. We're going to drag you out of the house. We're going to beat you to death. We're going to take your wife. We're going to rape her. And we're going to kill her and your children. Because I don't like you. And, and 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 to cover that, I'm going to say, oh well, you know, you 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 did something wrong to me, so uh, I deserve the right to go and deprive you of your right to due process, right? I don't have, I don't have to go and find twelve people that decide that you have to give up your house, your life, your freedom, or whatever. 
I don't have to. Why? Because you don't enjoy due process. Right? And if I've got at least two government officials telling me that I don't enjoy the right, that you guys can take anything from me anytime you want, and all you have to do is say, hey, he actually alleged that the president was a traitor. Because that's all I did. Uh, folks, there's no reason, there's no problem with any one of you charging an official with a criminal act. Why? Because if he enjoys due process, it's not a big deal. He can prove me wrong. He has every right to prove me wrong. He has every right to present his evidence in defense. I have every right to actually say, here's the charges, here's my evidence that he did that. Then 12 people who are reasonable, responsible, will look and say, hmm, okay, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Okay, that seems reasonable, that doesn't seem reasonable. Okay, yeah, all right. So we're confident that he either did that or he did not do that. And then a judge whose responsibility is making sure that the guys who are arguing the evidence or making sure that the right evidence is being presented and, and, and shenanigans aren't going on, you know, people aren't falsifying evidence and, and testimony and, and, and the actual procedure required to actually come to a just verdict are all met. Now, that's his job. I mean, he, he, he doesn't go in there and say, oh, well, no, no, do this or do this. He's not allowed to do that. He's supposed to just sit there and watch. And when he sees something that doesn't abide by the rules, specifically most especially should be the constitution but you know they got some other rules too that that have that that they threw in there but that's due process but you have every right to say hey wait a minute i saw the president do this and you know what lots of people saw the president do this a lot of this stuff actually happened people a higher pay grade than i did actually presented their testimony that these things did actually happen and I'm saying you know taken together that's an abuse of office at least but to me it rose to the level of sedition or treason but they didn't investigate the president obviously because he served out his term oh he got impeached for the Monica Lewinsky thing but you know that that wasn't important who cares He's an adult. She was an adult. Who cares? I, I, I don't care. As long as it affects, uh, doesn't affect uh, you know, his judgment as being president, who cares? That's not it. I mean, I, 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 but the other acts where, I, I mean, he, he was in an official capacity and he really failed, you know. You don't understand. What is a trustee that you can't trust? Hmm? What is a public servant that's not your servant? Huh? They're not a public servant. They're not a trustee. Right? Who is, you know, uh, you know, if you're engaging in criminal acts, you're a criminal. If you're engaging in criminal acts and somebody says, hey, you're engaging in criminal acts, hey, man, that's, you have the right to do that. But when I simply made the charge that, hey, Bill Clinton is committing acts of treason, Not only did they surveil me, but they did some other things that weren't right. They were depriving me of my capacity to sustain myself. Oh, they talked to my employer. My employer didn't find me. It was First Data Corporation. They didn't fire me. No, they didn't fire me. Mm -mm, I quit. Okay, There was a period of seven months where I was put in a situation where I can count on one hand the times I got two hours of continuous sleep during that entire period and you know after seven months of that I said you know what I'm out of here okay not only that but they're opening all my mail right they open all my mail and odd thing was is hey you know the checks to my mortgage company just didn't seem to be making it to the mortgage company Right? But the mortgage company, oh, oh, they they wouldn't say, hey, you're 30 days late. They wouldn't say, hey, you're 60 days late. They would wait until they were 120 days late. And then they would say, hey, you're 120 days late because the payment, two payments ago, we didn't make. 
All right, that's the kind of just petty crap that they were doing to us. Okay, not only that, but I get a call from a Delaware senator, Harris McDowell, the third, right? You know, a after I, I couldn't really find a job. Wow, nobody's responding to my resume. Nobody's talking to me, right? I'm about to not be able to make my house payment. I get a call. What? Just in time. Democratic Senator Harris McDowell, Delaware, calls me up and says, Hey, how would you like to move to Hong Kong? How would you like the opportunities we could get your ass out of the country so you can't create problems for us? Because we're not quite sure yet if the Bush Department of Justice and FBI are on the same page that we are. And once they figured out they were on the same page, after the whole 911 thing, hmm, they figured out, hey, they're as corrupt as we are. Hey, no problem. You can come back in the country. I've been managed ever since. I only get what they give me. I'm sitting in this house, and you are not listening to me because, hey, I'm in a reflected room. Prisoner. You know? Prisoner. Which is funny. You know, one of the things that I put in the wake uh, in the letter was, uh, you know, the Waco trial, right? Waco, right? Uh, I, and, and let's assume that David Koresh was the evil guy we all think he is. Okay? Could you explain to me why 85 people had to die because of what David Koresh did? Oh, terrible. Oh, and we were outraged. And I think a couple of agents were actually reassigned at a higher pay rate for that. So, yeah, justice was done. And, and words were spoken. Yeah, words from like Chuck Schumer right now. Good words. They sounded good. They sounded good. Yeah, and we all felt like, you know, Senate, House, and the President. All got to the bottom of it. We were all satisfied. Because they accidentally killed 85 people. Without due process of law. And they let it happen. They let it happen. They did it right in front of our face. And where were we? <laughs> we were watching Jerry Springer. So, don't get all excited, folks. You have a problem. It's a big problem. Now, can I help? Sure. But I can't do this by myself. You know? And if you stuck with me through this video long enough, you know, I ask you, hey, you know, I'm not asking for very much. I, I, I just said, hey, uh, I, I want due process of law. I, I, I want a fair trial. I don't want people taking stuff from me without 12 people saying it's right, without an actual law, without a review process. I want my evidence heard. I want to be able to call witnesses. You know, And, and if there are government officials that didn't meet their duty, they, they shouldn't be in office. That's all. And, I, uh, and shoot, I wouldn't deprive any of them the right to due process. Right? Look at Hillary Clinton and after all the stuff that she was doing. I mean, you, you know what people do not talk about is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, Bernie Sanders got screwed on this deal. <laughs> totally. And where's he at? Nowhere. I don't hear him. He, he, he gets no FaceTime in my, in my recommended feeds. Absolutely not. Yeah, where's he? He's got, I, I believe he's got a legitimate case and nobody's listening to him either. Right? I, I mean, what happened to Bernie Sanders is... It, it, is at least as atrocious as what happened to Trump, right? And, and, and let's talk about these sacred uh, sources and methods. Sources and methods. Oh, good God, where's Trady? Oh, we don't reveal sources and methods, right? Because, oh my God, that's sacrosanct. Oh, absolutely, we can't. Oh, that would be such, oh, People would think that we were bashing the heads of bunnies, little baby bunnies. It, it would be, I mean, it's absolutely such a gross 
absolutely gross perversion of everything and dogs and cats would be living together and you know and that's Trey Gowdy telling us this. Oh, what would we find out from what was judicial what judicial watch was doing <laughs> right and 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 these texts these texts that came out well <laughs> Carter Page worked for the FBI <laughs> They put Carter Page in Donald Trump's administration, and they were watching every aspect of uh, 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 of uh, Carter Page. He was under complete Title One surveillance. They were watching not only everyone that uh, him, but everyone he was talking to, and they were just listening in completely. Okay, and he worked for the FBI. Then they took that to the FISA court. That's you know the fact that he was actually trying to bag a Russian spy, made made the case that he was involved with the Russians. Yeah, of course he was trying to bag a spy. What's wrong with that? I'm totally okay with that. If he was a spy, then I think what Carter Page was doing was great. That's great. But they turned around and said, well, because he was bagging a, a Russian spy, that he was colluding with the Russians, and because we specifically installed him in the Clinton in the uh, Trump administration, that Trump is colluding with the Russians. And then they went to a FISA court judge who decided that, hey, sounds reasonable to me, right? So Trey Gowdy's out there telling us that, oh, we've got to protect the sources and methods. Okay, now, let's talk about the sources and methods. The source was Carter Page. Carter Page was used by, he was an FBI agent, used by the FBI to deprive Donald Trump of fundamental plenary rights by abusing the FISA court process. De hey, let's say they defrauded him, but I, I, I happen to think that the FISA court judge really wasn't interested. I guess there's been 35,000 requests for uh, uh, for surveillance and their diligence and in protecting our rights actually they denied 12 of them that's a hell of a track record folks <laughs> doesn't doesn't surprise me one bit that they watch me all the time and they're watching you right now uh, so Trey Gowdy out there saying that we've got to produce sources and methods well the source was Carter Page and the method was to defraud the FISA court Trey Gowdy, I really don't think uh, that protecting sources of methods, especially the FBI and the Department of Justice, is really, really matters to me at all. I give a shit who them people are, especially if they're engaged in that kind of thing. I, I, every man on this planet has a right to see what you guys are doing if you're doing that so Trey Gowdy you can shut your mouth about sources and methods because you have failed the people and pretty soon they're gonna figure out exactly who you are so it's probably a good thing that you get lost now I know that's gonna hair lip the whole bunch of you oh I said something that's gonna hair lip a whole bunch of oh I said it again oh god I how insensitive of me. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I feel so badly. Really. I feel so badly. I, I, I feel so wrong. I'm, I'm so ashamed. Oh. I'm sorry about being so serious. Hopefully you saw the deadpan humor in this and the, uh, you know, the irony in some of the things that I'm saying. Like, you know, here's some irony, and I'll, I'll leave you with this, okay? When the Secret Service agents said, hey, you accused the president of treason, and you said he should be hung for treason, he says, you know, that constitutes a threat to the president. He, and they said, you weren't wanting to do that, right? Where he says, are you the one that was going to do that? And I said, oh, no, no, I think the president should enjoy due process of law. No, he should be tried and then hung. Oops, I didn't mention that. But, you know, I assumed that if you were going to read the whole paragraph, then, then you're going to... Sorry, I ran out of, ran out of memory. Um, so I, I said, well, because of what we all know about 
uh, you know, the definition of a paragraph in that, you know, you make, you know, some sort of statement in the paragraph and then the, all of the other sentences support that initial statement, you know, as reinforcements as a function of an argument. Um, you know, instead of taking, you know, this word and, you know, I use the word treason, I use the word Bill Clinton and I use the word I and I use the word hanging and you could probably put those together uh, and I use the word, you know, for. So you could probably rearrange those words together to where you could say, yes, I indeed said I will hang Bill Clinton for treason. If you just take those words out of the out, out, out of the letter and just move them around. And that's why I've been a prisoner of Hillary Clinton. I, quite frankly, I sent the letter in. I think it got to the Hillary Clinton goons. She already had Secret Service. They actually read it and said, you know what? Hey, we got a big problem here. We like Bill Clinton. He's doing all the crime. He's covering our butts. We can do all the crimes that we want and we'll never be found out. And we're doing real good for that. So, man, this guy out here, you know, he, he's going to overturn the apple cart, man. I mean, how dare you? We can't let him do that. Let's go over there and make his life absolutely hell. You yeah, need to know something, folks. Right? They said, I don't have the right to due process. But when they asked me what should be done with Bill Clinton, I said, hey, try him, execute him. If he's found guilty, execute him. That's due process. They didn't give me what I was going to give Bill Clinton. And, you know, there's a lot of you out there that don't deserve, uh, don't believe that Bill Clinton deserves that. But don't, don't you believe it. If he gets the right to due process, why? Well, you know, let, let's say he's guilty of treason. Let's say he did everything that I alleged. Okay, let's let, let's say that for instance, he still enjoys the right to due process. Do we do it for him? No, we don't. We do it to protect the jurors on there, on 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 you know in, in the trial. We that's their right, too, right? Because we want to make sure that their rights are protected when they're re evaluating the evidence. Right, so that when they come to a verdict, that we all have confidence that what they did was right, just, and reasonable. And nobody can come back and say, hey, you juror, you broke the law, or you juror, you were wrong, or you juror didn't have the authority to do that. That protects them. Remember that the next time somebody just bursts into your door, uh, bursts your, uh, breaks your door down drags you out of your house, tases you, beats you, throws you in a ditch. But notice, I'm still alive. And I'm still walking around after I just said this. Huh? What do I know that kept me from ending, in a, uh, ending up in a ditch? Huh? Wouldn't you like to know what it is that I know? Oh, I will teach you I'm happy. But first, I need your help. Put this video in the hands of as many people as possible. That's how you can help me. Hey, I'd like to actually eat one more than once a day. That would be cool. You know, hit the roge.com website. Do that. Give me a dollar. <laughs> Just a dollar. I don't care. Just so I know, hey, wait a minute. I am not alone in a mirrored room with no voice and no recourse. So that I could see that little glimmer of light at the end of this dark tunnel. Because right now, folks, I don't see anything that I can point to that, that makes me happy. Because all I'm hearing is words and I see no action and nothing has changed since 1999 for me. Hey, your results may vary. You might be, my, might be fine. I'm not fine. And if I'm not fine you're not fine guarantee it because eventually what's happened to me is going to happen to you in fact it's happening to you right now there's a real possibility that these folks are going to get rid of the president that you elected against your will without any standard of reasonability decency or lawful authority just simply, ma just simply manipulating perception, where you believe that you're being told the truth. 
it's not the truth, but boy, as long as you believe it's the truth, hey, what does it matter? Really, does it matter? Is, is, is this the life you want to live? Better make darn sure, because it's commitment time, folks. All right, so I'm Roach. All right, you have a good day.